Michael Sonnenschein, the uh, Great Scale CEO, of course. Big news today on Bitcoin, and actually by extension, and it benefits to, to, to Michael, of course, all things uh, crypto related. Quite a run, but you know, I'm noticing, Michael, it's always great to have you, thank you, that, uh, you know, Bitcoin has had a wild swing, with about $5,000 over the course of the last 24 hours. Why, why, why is that? Are they just trying to grasp the enormity of this, or what? Well, first of all, thanks for having me back. Great to be here. You know, the last, you know, 24, 48 hours have honestly been a blur. Um, it wouldn't be, you know, crypto if there wasn't some volatility. Right. What we're really focused on, though, is the fact that these approvals came through yesterday afternoon. And after 10 years of work, we've been able to uplist GBTC right here to the floor of the New York Stock Exchange. You know, it, it will make it easier to trade this, spot trading in this. It could change the environment here. But do, do you think it's going to make a huge difference. How would you characterize the impact of this? Well, I think many people in the investment community have often looked at crypto and perhaps even Bitcoin most specifically, since it has the largest market cap of any of the crypto assets, as really being outside of the financial system. The fact that Bitcoin is now offered through the protections of the spot Bitcoin ETF wrapper really weaves this asset class directly into our financial services system. And that to us signals the staying power of this asset class and opens up the opportunity to a much larger larger group of investors. Well, I want to expound on that if I can. Uh, my buddy Charlie Gasparino, you know him well. He's here weighing in on the significance yep. of this with you. Uh, Charlie, good to see you. Of course, you know Michael quite well. Um, I think it's a big day um, for the maturation of crypto. I mean, uh, you know, Rome was a big day. <laughs> you know, um, you, you're Wouldn't it be funny if we looked back and we found out Rome actually was built in a day? It would really embarrass us. Yeah. And yes, you know, they, boom. They, they, yeah. Remember that? But this is like what, that kind of watershed moment to you, right? I think so, because, I mean, here's the thing. You know, there's been scandals. I'm sorry, Charlie, we're having mic issues with you. Well, hopefully we can address that, guys. Um, Michael, I do want to go back on that and in the Rome built in a day thing and the, the significance of this day, because... You know, even when the SEC sort of wrote, wrote off on this, Gary Gensler was not exactly saying the most robust things about it. That angered Kathy Wood, with whom we'll be chatting later. But what did you make of his push and pull on this? Well, you know, if you look closely at the chairman's remarks, a lot of what he pointed to was Grayscale's court victory uh, last year. You know, it's unfortunate that the SEC initially denied GBTC's application right. to uplist. We did need to make the tough decision to sue our regulator. We got a unanimous victory in court, and GBTC now has not only uplisted to NYSE ARCA, um, but it's paved the way for additional products to come to market and really, again, opening up access to crypto for a much broader Broader group of investors. You know, the one, I mean, as I was saying before, there is a maturation going on here. Uh, having retail, re real retail, being able to buy it on a real, on a, no, I shouldn't say a real exchange because I'm sure the people at Coinbase are going to be right. a little annoyed, but at a publicly traded established exchange is a huge step towards mainstreaming the uh, crypto. And some fear that. And right? now here's the problem. The rubber is going to meet the road at some point. Is Bitcoin, which is created by, not, and it's not backed by anything, it's created by a bunch of computers, people on computers trying to figure out complex mathematical questions, is this thing that it, and it, it's really like, the store of value is pretty nebulous, you know, is that going to, can that hold through this? Hmm. Um, will average people want to buy the currency of international money laundering, which is what Bitcoin is? And, and uh, what's the spillover to that effect? You know, Michael, I was noticing before you getting ready to see you, my friend, not only is Bitcoin uh, volatile, it was, it was actually almost closing in on $50,000 a coin right now. Now we're around the 45 area. But as you've warned me, it, it is volatile. Ethereum was up 7%, now up that 6%. We had XRP. Uh, had been up about 8%, now it's up about 5.5%. So there are different plays on this, and I get that. I'm just wondering uh, whether people who thought the volatility might ease now with sort of like this street cred moment, if you liken it to that, uh, but it won't be. It still won't be sure. for the faint of heart. What do you think? 
Well, I think you gentlemen have hit on a couple of different points. And first, I want to respectfully push back. You know, Bitcoin is not the currency for international money laundering. It is. You know, in fact, Bitcoin has no Bitcoin has Come been on. shown time and I mean, again. Listen, I'm not, I'm to not leave. a Bitcoin hater, but people use this stuff to do nefarious things. It's proven, it's known. And and by the way, oh, that's part of it. the vast majority, you could argue, use it for other let, quite legitimate. Let me right? be on the record. I don't know. Oh. Let me I, be how do you the, know let, that? Let, let him answer. Let me, <laughs> Guys, let me be on the record saying that Bitcoin is one of the worst tools possible to move value if you are doing anything the least bit nefarious. And as you guys, well, it is harder to trace, though. He does have a point there, right? Isn't that why you know some some like it for those? Purposes. Well, you guys have hit on a couple of things, and yeah. actually one of the things that I believe in, which is that Bitcoin is multidimensional. You mentioned, is Bitcoin a currency? Is it a store of value? Mm. Is it an inflation hedge? And I think each of these you know, investment theses around Bitcoin can resonate. Multiple of them can be true. There can be multiple truths around this, and well, that's why Bitcoin may in fact, let, let me be on the record. May in fact appeal to different investors. Michael, let me be on the record to say that Bitcoin is used for a lot of bad stuff around the world. And we, it is absolutely proven. Now, this is, I, but you again, argue, Charles, just to be fair, there are a lot so of other dollar. currencies and dollars that are used for the same purpose. Uh, as nefarious indeed, human. there are. Having said that, though, Charlie, what right. do you see? What do your people tell you about where this all goes? Um, listen, it, it, I'm just so you know, made political with this. I, I can see positives with this. I mean, I, I can. We should stress that much like the people you cover, you hate everyone and equally, everything. And equally, it's fair and balanced. Yes, and. Uh, you know, as, as much as I like Larry Fink, he knows I broke his chops a lot. Now, yes, Larry Fink would say, and he's the head of BlackRock, right. which is one of the providers of this, um, along with Michael, is that, you know, he used to be a hater, and now he's not. And it's, it's not just because he wants to make money. He's, which he does, Michael does as well, we all do, but he also sees that it, it, you can't change the fact that a lot of people, and I'm not talking about criminals in this case, a lot, of, a lot of people see Bitcoin and crypto as a store of value and increasingly an inflation hedge. One reason they do that is now, because... The biggest thing going for it might be just that, right? Well, if you think about it, and, and by the way, look what happened over, since the pandemic. The Fed has come in and debased the currency in ways that we've never had before. I mean, just printed money, zero interest rates. Um, now, the Fed is also, the, the, US, the, US dollar, the, the U.S. dollar is backed up. Maybe you can finish that but, statement. But, so, what were you saying there, Michael? No, in 2023, Bitcoin was one of the best performing assets, if not the best performing asset of the year, right? So directly to, you know, what is being said here about right. investors looking to Bitcoin as an inflation hedge, you know, that theory, that thesis around investing in Bitcoin no, but, but and point, having a piece my, of your portfolio my point, is playing my, out. My, Michael, my bigger point is that Everybody takes on Bitcoin by saying it's not backed by the taxing power of the U.S. government. But the taxing power of the U.S. government only goes so far. And currencies are only based on what someone would want to buy it for. What the, the, the value of it is in many ways based on faith in the American system. So you can argue this a lot of different ways. Right, right. Well, Michael, could I get your take? I wish we had more time, my friend. But I did want to get your take on, I talked about this giving crypto and related investments sort of street cred, this SEC nods and an ETF. A lot of people come into a market that heretofore they might not have. I'm just wondering what it means just for demand, what it means ultimately for price, anyone's guess, I get. But the, the demand, well, now you have a reason. Sure. It's like a good housekeeping quasi seal of approval, right? I think that's exactly right. I mean, when we talk to our investors, when we survey the investment community, there have certainly been investors that have been patiently watching for Bitcoin to debut inside the ETF wrapper. They've right. been waiting for the protections of the ETF wrapper. So I think even just here alone in the U.S., um, you know, when you just look at the financial advice market, there's over $30 trillion worth of wealth there that by and large has not been participating. So I do think the uplisting of GBTC, the you know debut of some of these other products as well, really does open up that market well, um, and hopefully can satisfy you, some of that demand that's been waiting point. on the sidelines. He, uh, Neil brings up a good point. In this sense, will financial advisors now say, okay, you know, you, you know, you're my client who has a, a million dollars in investable assets, which is what you need essentially to go to a financial advisor these days. We want you 30, 60% uh, stocks, 20% mm -hmm. Bonds or 30% bonds and 10% crypto. That does crypto become part 
of, of the, that mix. Of the of that asset mix, mix the, the right. financial advisor, and that is okay. still to be determined. Final word, Charlie, I want to thank you. Michael, great seeing you. Congratulations on this. You would, Thanks for uh, having me. It, it didn't look like that day would come for a while with the back and forth on this. And by the way, uh, I actually misspoke. The trading range within Bitcoin alone today is actually more like $6,000 from where we were briefly yesterday afternoon got as high as almost $50,000 a coin. So that does show you, of course, it's a volatile investment, not for the faint of heart, but it does shows you even with this on again, off again, are we going to get this SEC blessing? It's a wild ride. It, it doesn't necessarily mean it's any less one.